What's up, Mike? Is that yours? Yeah, this is the 12HT. Well, that's just not right. <laughs> I know, man. I almost came to take some notes from you. Good to see you. Good to see you. How you been? Hey, Kev. What's up, man? Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's... you're not putting a 12HT in the... Oh, that's, an, that's another one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I could take some detailed notes today if you want, because... That one's dialed in. <laughs> well, it runs down the road. I won't promise you it's dialed in. <laughs> That's an original factory hood rocket. Okay. They only made 2,000 of them in three years, period, in a sentence. Really? Yeah. What, is that cool. a 350? No. That is a Pontiac 316. Oh, yeah. Sounds good. How long did this one take you to, to fix up, Mike? This one? Yeah. This was a six year project. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, here is the FJ45. This thing is just absolutely mint. I'm gonna pull it out in the garage here in a minute, amongst all these other projects. Roll all the stuff out of the way. We'll get to uh, ask Mike a few questions about where it all came from, how he got to this point, what made him decide to do what he did. Uh, just give you a general walk around. We'll do a, a cold start and uh, yeah. Yeah, I hope you enjoy this one. Should be good. Uh, should be a good episode. <laughs> I love the name Tetanus. It just, I mean, it, you've got to get a private plate for it, you know? <laughs> That's a Subaru. Yeah. But it generally wants to roll straight. All right, here we have it. 1978, right, Mike? 1978, that's correct. All right, so we've seen a lot of vehicles. Mike's got some wicked projects going on, but this, for me, and for the cruiser heads, I think, is the crown jewel, right, of what you have going on here. So let's just go through it, Mike. Let's run down what this, where you got the truck from, you know, what go, what you did to it. I mean, like we said earlier on, and we could talk about this for about an hour, yes. but this, uh, there's so many details on this truck, sure. and I'm sure I'm going to miss some stuff, but let's just fire right away, Mike. What, sure. What's going on here? Where did it come from? Where did you get it? Okay. Well, first of all... Oh, sorry. The guy's cutting his lawn. <laughs> Hope you can hear. All right. First of all, I want to give a shout out to my mate, Dan Green, down under. <laughs> Dan, you asked me for this way too long ago. Brother, I am sorry it's taken so long, but this is it, and it's all about you, brother. This is my 1978... Uh, it was an FJ45. It originally was imported by somebody in Massachusetts from Australia. Um, the cab and the chassis was. I had bought my first uh, Land Cruiser, an FJ40, in uh, 2013, and I hadn't had it for about six months. I saw a picture of an FJ45, and I'm obviously a truck guy, and I figured out I'd bought the wrong Land Cruiser. I resisted the urge as long as I could, and finally just told my wife. It's all right. Just told my wife, I said, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a 45. She says, well, you don't need two four-wheel drives. I said, this is true. When I buy the 45, I'll sell the 40. So she says, okay. So I started looking and, I, and everybody that knew me in the club and, and around here locally knew that I was conducting a, a literal nationwide search. And so I contacted a friend here uh, who owns a lot of Land Cruisers. And that's uh, Zach Finney, who's the CEO of Finney Toyota here in Huntsville. But I knew Zach had another, he had the pieces of a 69 FJ45 that they had cut up for a project and never finished. And I've been begging him to sell me the chassis and the bed and all the other pieces. And so 
after the test drive, I was sitting down talking with Zach, and I said, Zach, do you not have another 45 that you'd be interested in selling? So he sat down with his iPad and says, oh, yeah, I think I got one. And Dan, he literally did like this on his iPad for three and a half minutes. Oh, yeah? They were all cruisers. Wow. They were tells 12 shots per page. Wow, okay. So he was looking through his Land Cruiser inventory. Did I say that he was a collector? <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. He's a collector. So is his dad. Been collecting all of his life. He got his first one when he was 12. So finally he goes, oh, there it is. And he shows me his picture of a dark blue cabin chassis. No bed at all. Didn't have a flat bed. Didn't have a fleet side, step side bed on or nothing. I said, where's that sitting at, Zach? He says, that's at the farm. So the Zach Finney farm is 5.1 miles from where you're standing in that direction. So I've been looking for 10 months all over the nation, and 5.1 miles from my house is the truck I would ultimately buy. So I struck a bargain with him for the, the cabin chassis out of the farm, and I did talk him out of the bed and the chassis at the, uh, that he had up at the dealership on the 69, so I would have the complete body for one. So I brought them all home, and you'll find those pictures on my, on my page. Yeah, I'll link those pictures in as we, as we go yeah. through so you can see so some history on the vehicle. Brought it all home. It had a 2F and a 4-speed in it. and. Um, Full floating axle, drum brakes all the way around because it's Aussie. And um, I put the bed on it immediately, so I've got a complete truck sitting there and worked on getting it to run. First thing I want to do is make it run. And it had the 2H in it at the time, right? No, this was a 2F. It was a gas Oh, it was a 2F, okay. So I literally started with an FJ and ended up with an HJ. All right. So uh, the carburetor had been uncovered and was just crap. So I put a, a $12 kit in the carburetor and got it dry. And we were, we were off. I had my run and drive and right hand drive, 2F powered, uh, 78 FJ45. I found a nice 2H with a 5 speed attached to it out of Texas. They were JDM importers. So got the 2H in it, uh, put the 5 speed in it, and um, she runs like a top. Everybody's had a 2H, knows what a 2H is all about. You know the downfalls, you know the upside of it. She was tough to crank in the winter, and it was loud. and <laughs> It was slow. And here in Huntsville, there's a mountain between me and town. You guys probably came over it. With the 411 gears in it um, and the five speed, it, it was third gear to get up the mountain either way. Blowing <laughs> smoke. Blowing smoke. Blowing smoke. And doing 45. <laughs> yeah, on a good day. Well, then a mutual friend of ours went and bought a 12 HT and dropped it in his FJ60. And I didn't want any part of it. I helped him do his. And when we finally got that truck running, we were out on a test drive. We may have actually been driving at home. He says, you want to drive it, Mike? No, no, Roma, I don't want to drive it. <laughs> sure you don't want to drive it? Ah, I'm positive, I don't want to drive it. Why don't you want to drive it? I said, because if I drive it, I'm probably going to want it. So, yeah, uh, I drove the 12 HT in a 86 or 87 uh, FJ60. And, uh, yeah, the rest, as they say, is history. Sold. Love at first uh, sound. Had to, <laughs> Had to have it. It was okay when I was in the pasture to see, but once I got a hold of that throttle, you feel that turbo spool up, and ah. she kicks, just carried that thing right on down the road. Yeah, that 2H is a real dog. Right. So it's got to go. Now, when you um, were looking for the 12HT, now we'll talk about this more in a minute, where that engine came from. Did you ever find any stateside? I did. There were a, a couple. Okay. Um, I, there was one listed on Mud at the time for $10,000. <laughs> I had watched a guy in the Netherlands literally build a 45. It had an H diesel in it. He rebuilt this thing. He rebuilt every piece of sheet metal by hand. Most magnificent thing I've ever seen. He was t he'd take the rusty pieces, he'd draw it out, measure it, draw it, and then he would hand form every single piece. The X braces for the bottom of the cab, he made them from sheet metal. The back wow. of the cab, he made it from a piece of sheet metal. With the with the dimples in it, it's not like he's doing shade tree mechanic work. It looked just like and was built to a factory Toyota specs. So when he got his truck going he put a 2h it had an h in it he put a 2h in his he takes it out drives it a little bit and he made a comment you know about it being a little slow and one of his buddies and somebody else up on on the mud form in the netherlands so the way well, hey, mate what you need is this 12 ht i've got over here so i had the engine imported to uh texas because that's where joe katana gets all his stuff at he made a deal to stick it in one of his uh container ships uh literally Mark drove it an hour or an hour and a half to Joe's place in a container, in a crate. And then Joe put it in his container and brought it over. And Roma and I went to Dallas, December the 26th, <laughs> in a tornado. Joe, I have 70 series axles under here. 
and Joe imported those uh, from wherever Joe gets parts from. And uh, I had already been out there uh, previously and picked the axles up from him probably a year before that. So I knew right where Joe lived. But yeah, um, so we brought 12HT home. Now it was already, you said it was already freshly rebuilt, so just ready to roll, right? Yep. What was missing? Anything from it? Just Nothing, it was a complete motor. So literally, uh, I'd already had a 2H and a 5-speed in there, yanked that out, put it aside, dropped the 12 HT in it, and um, 14 months later drove it out of the garage. So it would have been before then, this was probably December of 2015, because I got the 12 HT well before that time, before I took everything apart. And by my birthday, January 15th of 2016, uh, I had the 12 HT cranking for my birthday. That's cool. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, didn't have any front sheet metal on it, but uh, and that video is up on my build thread as well. So I literally blasted it all to pieces, had a body guy lined up, took every piece of sheet metal to him, which by the way, it was still right hand drive at the time. That's right, and coincidentally, coincidentally. we're still doing this at the time, Kev had all the parts to make this left-hand drive. That's how I met Kevin. Yeah. I bought his small world left-hand drive cow um, shortly before I took everything apart and uh, took all the body pieces over there and told my uh, body guy how this thing's supposed to come apart and how it needs to go back together and how it's not going to rattle. Um, and what color is this, Mike? This is 1978 FJ45, or actually Toyota Land Sky Blue. It okay. is a factory 78 Land Cruiser color. But it was this not the factory color for the original for this body, is it? Yeah, no. And what was the original color? Um, when I took the cowl off of it, there was a dove gray on the bottom side of the cowl. Okay. Um, it had been a couple of colors. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the last color that the cab and front clip was was a really dark blue. And the bed was a type of sky blue, but it wasn't this exact shade of it. Blew it all apart, took him all the sheet metal. Total it? time was... 14 months from taking driving in the garage and taking it apart until I drove it out of the garage. 14 hmm. months. While he was doing the body, I was doing the chassis work. He sandblasted the chassis for me. I took it up to Chattanooga, Tennessee and had it hot dip galvanized mm -hmm. and then brought it back to him and he painted it with uh, 2K, satin black. Then when he finished squirting it, I brought all the pieces home and started the assembly process and every bit of it was done in that little garage right there. Every <laughs> bit of it. Do you intend this to be a restoration? And did you just it want was gonna it? be a resto mod. Resto mod. But do yeah. you intend for that, or does it just it just went that way? <clears throat> no, I, it was gonna be it was gonna be shiny, and it was gonna be it was it was supposed to be able to perform, driving around here as my daily ride, take it off road when I wanted to, mm -hmm. and um, that was my intent. And going diesel would get me some gas mileage where I could afford to drive it and so all of that seems to have worked out. I drove it out to your eight with solid axle sump in the second one uh, in August of 2018. She ran like a champ, not a single issue. Um, if you stay out of the throttle it gets 22 to 25 miles to the gallon. And by out of the throttle I mean keep it off of 75 miles an hour. Right. If you're following some of your slow brothers over the relic run at 55 she gets 25 miles to the gallon. I uh, noted. Blowing yeah. some people's minds, uh, including mine. That was the first time. That was the first overland trip I'd taken when we took. That was. We uh, went out to. Uh, it was like a thousand. Well, for us, it was a thousand mile round trip. But yeah. you had the. We were running two Fs, yeah. and you had the uh, twelve HT. And I remember we were coming back, and you said, "Okay, I'm gonna." I think your exact words were, "I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let the big dog eat." Yep. And then you just like smoked us, <laughs> <laughs> and off you went. That was it. So that was it. Just a disappearing blue dot on the horizon. Let's talk about the interior for a bit, shall we? Okay, sure. Yeah, take a look here. So this thing is stunning. What all did you do to that? I mean, just in a nutshell. So I put 79 seats in it. Those were actually right-hand drive seats that I converted to left-hand drive because I could not find that version in left-hand drive here. Mm -hmm. um, gas tank still in the seat, obviously. Put a little custom uh, cover to cover up the framework that supports the seats. I've got an old era product air conditioning system in it that works like a tramp. It blows at 39 freaking degrees. Wow. Um, I've got some LED lights in the dash. I've got a Dakota digital dash instrument cluster in it. Um, Door cards, you just had them recovered? Reco uh, actually, these are custom cards made by a poultry shop over in Georgia. Okay. Uh, I wanted them black and... Uh, 
because technically Land Cruisers never came in black interiors, although 90% of them in the States are black. Um, so I got black ones and they had black seat covers. Um, it's got an SOR shelf in it that I bought secondhand. Paid too much for it because then I had it powder coated and sandblasted and I paid more than SOR wanted for it new. But yeah, yeah I, like, I like those though. That's a, that's yeah, a nice... It works because you have no storage capacity in the cab of a 45. Okay, so my local fabricator built, built this for me. I'd seen a picture up on mud that I liked, uh, something similar to that, and I took it to him. And he's also the same guy that made the bed rack to hold my, uh, my eye camper as well. So, very nice. You got the so max nice tracks under there and high lift jack over here. Bed's all been redone. What did you do with this monster liner or was this something so else? So this is a military grade product that my, uh, my body guy shoots on all his stuff. So I've got bed liner in the bed, obviously, but the bottom of the bed is covered in it. The bottom of the cab, the bottom of the front fenders, the entire running boards are covered in the same product. The bottom of the hood is covered in that same product, and the bottom of the floor of the cab is covered in it. Nice. Does that do you think that helps with the noise? Is it just help yeah, with the noise way down? Does it? Oh. I put a carpet kit into the front of it, and I also put uh, some rubber foam mats so the carpet kit doesn't get dirty. <laughs> uh, and it's it's super super quiet. Is that carpet kit custom, or did you get that from somewhere as well? Um, it I bought it someplace online. It is made for a forty-five. Okay. Uh, suspension. What are you running back there? So I've got Old Man Emu, it's the it's the heavy, so that's only like a two and a half inch lift on it, and um, running their shocks, their springs, and uh, their bushings. I did put a body mount kit, kit on there, new body mounts all the way through it. Okay. Uh, three inch exhaust? Two and a half. Two and a half inch exhaust? Yep. Yep. Okay. Straight. No muffler. That's how it should be, right? That's right. <laughs> what mirrors are these? But that's the, I think it's an FJ45 Euro style. Okay. Uh, bought those brand new in a Toyota box. And then, of course, there's the old school ARB bumper, an 8274 hiding under there. You decided you go with uh, everything black and, that yep. was the theme, right? Yep. Black and blue, my two favorite colors. So black and blue. They work together. Very and nice. Those are uh, GM rally rims that are on there um, because I wanted 8 inch wide wheels mm -hmm. and I wasn't paying the price to get Toyota wheels widened okay um but those are uh 15s the 15 by 8 just had to cut the center hole out lug pattern's exactly the same offset's fine and how many miles on this thing since the rebuild oh well i see the rebuild but how long since you've had it since well i don't know i didn't count my uh, odometer wasn't working in the early days mm -hmm. but since the the rebuild i put a little over twelve thousand on it nice and not one issue um i've had two issues with it the whole time. One was at Ure, at the last day on the trail run, uh, the turbo wasn't spooling up. Long story short, the filter that I had in my snorkel mm -hmm. uh, straw mm -hmm. was st so stopped up that it couldn't breathe through it. As okay. soon as I took that off of it, it ran fine. Okay. And the other one was um, the valve, the VSV, that's the shut off valve, mm -hmm. the two wires going to it, the worst possible place, the most technical spot, I get up on top of a rock and it quits. On oh, no. And what had happened was I flexed hard enough that it pulled my, my crimp joints apart. I'm sitting there, it won't crank, and it won't crank, and it won't crank. Uh, we figured out what it was, and I brought it home and soldered that bag end thing up like it should have been to begin with. So but that's literally the only two issues. Um, yeah, that's it. She's, she has run like a champ, 12,000 miles. Cool. Um, well, I think, I'm trying to think of anything else on the exterior. I think we've been through everything, <clears throat> more or less. Well, let's pop the pop the bonnet. Pop the bonnet <laughs> <laughs> for the, the good stuff here. Ooh, she's pretty. Now we talked about this before. He was well, off camera. You just run this temporary. You don't run the. He normally has like a tubing, and I'll, I'll put a picture on the screen that goes across the engine bay to the uh, snorkel. But you're not running that just for around town, right? Yeah, I never run it in town. I Ben's back here and it's got an inline uh, fuel filter, uh, air filter in it. Right, cool. So you got the, uh, we talk about the air conditioning, the radiator, we'll, we'll talk about that later on. That's, uh, I've got one, he's got one for me sitting in that box right there. Yeah. That's going to go to my uh, FJ45. And this is, so that, you know, this is really what 
Lucille, if you guys are watching the channel, you know, building up Lucille here. Uh, this is what she wants to be. Maybe not as nice as this, but uh, oh, nice. when she's uh, all grown up, this is what it's going to look like, hopefully. So, and you mentioned one battery. I yep. think that's probably worth mentioning. Yep. Because real estate in that engine bay is, is premium, especially when you drop that 12 HT in there. And they make a double battery tray kit. Um, it, that, that marine battery from uh, Optima has kicked this thing on days colder than 20 degrees. And has never had a problem cranking it. Runs everything. I don't have any other, as a matter of fact, I just put LED headlights on it, took some Silver Star halogens out of it, so I've lightened the electrical load on it. Um, never had a problem charging anything. Cool. And I've never had a fan shroud on this thing. Oh yeah, I didn't even notice that. And when we went to Ure, huh? it was 100 and 110 degrees because we went from here to Texas. Yeah. And it was hot. And she was cool as a cucumber as long as she was rolling. Are you running off to market uh, temperature gauge or just the standard stock one? Well, it's the... Uh, oh, the you're Dakota, Dakota, yeah, you're Dakota Digital. That's right. So what what we temperatures do you recall? She got up to 210 sitting in traffic. 210, okay. It usually runs 180 to 190 mm -hmm. uh, in the summertime around here just running up and down the road. But yeah, when we were sitting still in traffic in Oklahoma behind an accident, <laughs> yeah, with 18 wheelers blocking all the breeze around us, 210 degrees. Okay, uh, is that a aftermarket booster and master cylinder? What are you running there? Uh, I'm pretty sure I got that from City Racer. Okay. So it's not a 40 series, it is a dual diaphragm. This thing's got change back brakes on it. It's got what, sorry? Change back brakes. Okay. It stops on a dime and gives you the change back. <laughs> Um, That's so the most southern thing I think I've heard you say. Oh, I've really? heard you say a lot of southern stuff. Well, <laughs> maybe. Power steering, you went with a Saginaw? I did. And why did you do that? Uh, I had Saginaw on my previous 40 and, and really, really liked it. Okay. Saginaw yeah. probably makes one of the best powering steering gearboxes that's ever been made in the automotive industry. Ready? How long has it been since you started this thing? Um, I think I started it two weeks ago to roll it out of the driveway. I actually drove it about two weeks ago, so it's been at least two weeks since I've started it. Sounds great. We get a clip here of the Dakota Digital gauge. Oh, and don't forget the backup camera. Oh, that's right. When I put that tent up there, that blocked my whole view to the rear view mirror. Right, there's not much, uh, I can't really see a whole lot of that giant thing in the way. Turbo sounds so good. You can't hear it in the 60 as much as you can in this. You can hear it, but. That's your air filter. When I put the snorkel tube on there, yeah. it completely damages the, the whistle. Nine 
day difference. Well, you ain't seen nothing yet, big boy. Night and day difference. Take a ride at the stop sign. Yeah, I feel kind of privileged, Mike, driving this thing. I'm like one of the few people. Roma's the only other person that's ever driven it. Wow. Well, I like how the camera's on all the time. I thought maybe you'd have to push a button. Nope. It's a rear-looking camera. That's a really good idea. When I do my tray and canopy setup, I'm going to have to do something like that because yeah. I don't want to see out the back either. Yeah, this twitchy throttle is a 12HTism. Yeah. And uh, I've come up with a. I think I've come up with a fix. I should. I, I can I can drive this Colorado. This be alright. This be fine. Let me drive this thing. I feel privileged. Any time, mate. This thing is a beast. Well, I need to get the 12 HT in mine now. <laughs> get it going. Very cool. Yep. Love it. Hi, right, Mike. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Man. Appreciate coming out and look at all your sweet gear, man. I, I want to get that 12 HT in Lucille now. I'm desperate. June, I'm gonna, baby. June. I, I say, I got the fever. <laughs> I got the fever. But uh, yeah, man. Thanks a lot for letting us come down. Absolutely. Check out your sweet rig. Um, check us out on Instagram at Music City Cruise if you haven't done so already. We'll catch you guys next time.